Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. You have an analog meter. Now what? You say, well, this is only a 50 microamp meter. How do I use it to measure higher currents? That is exactly what I'm going to talk about in this video. Now, if you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. I make a concerted effort to respond to every comment. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. So, let's get to it. If you're not familiar with how to read an analog meter accurately, see this video. I put the link up here in the corner. Now, if you haven't done it yet, you need to fully characterize your ammeter before you can start this design. You need to know its internal resistance and its full-scale current. To do this, you can see the video. I've put the link up in the corner up here. This is exactly how to go about the process of characterizing your ammeter. Now, I've already characterized the meter that I'm going to be using for this demonstration. I discovered that it is a 50 microamp meter, which has an internal resistance of 2,000 ohms. We are going to be using this meter to create a meter with a 250 milliamp full-scale reading to utilize the second current scale of the meter. Now, I could use this same process to create a 250 amp amp meter or anything that I want. The process remains the same. The values we use would change. Now, I've known folks who made their own custom scale to go with their meter and replace the native one to the meter. So how do we calculate the values that we need to make this happen? Well, let's go discover that. The object of what we're going to be doing is to set things up so that when 250 milliamps is flowing through our ammeter box, only 50 microamps is flowing through our analog meter movement. The foundation of this design lay in the fact that when we have resistors in parallel, they share the current. So what we want to do is put a resistor in parallel with our 50 microamp meter movement that will have 250 milliamps minus the 50 microamps running through it. This parallel resistor is called a shunt resistor because it shunts current around the meter movement. Now, the easiest way to figure out the needed value of this resistor is by calculating the voltage across the previously characterized meter at full scale. By definition, the voltage across the meter movement and the voltage across the parallel resistor will be the same because they're in parallel. So when there is 50 microamps of current running through this 2000 ohm resistor, the voltage across the resistor would be the full-scale current of the, re of the meter times the internal resistance of the meter, gives us 50 microamps times 2,000 ohms, or 0.1 volts. So with this meter, we will have 0.1 volts across it when 50 microamps is running through it. What, next, we calculate the current running through this parallel resistor over here. And this will be the total current of our box minus the full scale current of our meter, which is 250 milliamps minus 50 microamps. So the current through our shunt resistor needs to be 249.95 milliamps, or 0.24995 amps. The shunt resistor has 0.1 volts across it, just like the 50 microamp meter movement. And so now we can calculate the value that this resistor has to be when it has 0.1 volts across it with this amount of current through it. And so the value of this resistor will be the shunt resistor is equal to the voltage across the shunt resistor divided by the current in the shunt resistor 
that we already know that's 0.1 volts across the shunt resistor. We've calculated the current through it as 0.24995 amps, and that gives us a shunt resistor value of 0 0.40008 ohms. But you know, we absolutely positively have to ask the question, what does the power dissipation of the shunt resistor need to be? We have essentially 250 milliamps running through this resistor and rounding this off to the closest value, we have 0.4 ohms. So the power dissipation in this shunt resistor is equal to the current through the shunt resistor squared times the value of the shunt resistor. So we have 250 milliamps squared times 0.4, which gives us 0.025 watts. Now, we're not going to use a resistor that size. We want to properly derate it. And so properly derated, we need at least a 50 milliwatt or 0.05 watt resistor to accomplish our goal here. Now, we have to see if we can find a resistor with these specifications. 0.4 ohms, 50 milliwatts, what can we find out there at the various distributors? Hmm, well, you know what? You can't buy a 0.40008 ohm resistor. Now, you can buy a 0.4 ohm resistor. So how far off are we going to be if we go out and buy a 0.4 ohm resistor? Well, let's do the math. 0.4 minus 0 0.40008 divided by 0 0.40008 times 100 gives us, well, we're off by 0.02%. Totally insignificant. So a 0.4 ohm resistor, perfect. Now, we also have to recognize that we can't buy perfect resistor. Every resistors have tolerance. Now, a quick check of my favorite distributors tells me that the best you're going to do is a 1% resistor for a leaded type resistor. Now, if on the other hand, you're willing to use a surface mount resistor, then we can find a perfect match to your application. But what do I choose to do? Well, rather than having to buy a separate resistor from a distributor, paying the shipping and everything, I chose to build my own. So let's see what I can put together to make this work. Well, for identical resistors in parallel, the total resistance is the resistance of a particular resistor divided by the number that you have. So I have my 2.2 ohm resistors. I wanted to do five in parallel. That gives me a resistance of 0 0.44 ohms. Okay, so that's still not 0 0.40008. Well, what do I need to put in parallel with this to get my 0.4 ohms that I'm looking for? Well, using the parallel resistor formula for two non-identical resistors and manipulating it to solve for the needed resistor, given the total resistance that I'm after and one resistor, the formula that I end up with is this. So the second resistor is equal to the total resistance I'm shooting for times the first resistor, all of that divided by the resistor that the first resistor minus the total that I'm shooting for. So I'm shooting for 0.40008 ohms. I'm multiplying it by what I got from my five 2.2 ohm resistors in parallel, which is 0 0.44, dividing that whole thing by the 0.44 minus 0 0.4008, and I end up with 4.4097 ohms. And I think, wait a second, I got a whole parcel of 2.2 ohm resistors. What if I took two of those and put them in series? I get 4.4 ohms. So, my final configuration looks something like this. 
I have one, two, three, four, five, 2.2 ohm resistors in parallel. And then at the end, I have two 2.2 ohm resistors in series in parallel with the whole rest. And theoretically, ideally, with perfect 2.2 ohm resistors, this actually gives me exactly 0 0.4 ohms. But these are 5% resistors. So I might not have a real 0.4 ohm resistor. I need to measure this to see what I have. So how can I know what this value is? Trying to do it with my DVM isn't going to hack the program because the DVM just, they don't do well at low resistor values like 0.4 ohms. So let me show you a quick and easy way to do this. So what are we going to need to do this? Well, we need a power supply capable of providing the current. We need a resistor all set up to be able to handle current and at an appropriate value. We need a meter capable of measuring millivolts such as this fluke. And then we need another meter capable of measuring current, such as this tenda. All right, let's put it all together. First of all, the power supply is turned all the way down. From the positive side of the power supply, we go to the positive side of our ammeter. Negative side of the ammeter, we come around here to the big resistor. From the other side of the big resistor, we come around to our shunt resistor. From the other side of the shunt resistor, we come back up here to the power supply. Now we have to connect up our voltmeter, and this is real important that we do this right. So we go from the positive side of our voltmeter around to the side of our shunt resistor that goes back to the resistor over here. But notice that I have connected it to the outside, the part away from where I've connected this. That way, we're not going to see the voltage drop across any leads or conductors that are here. We're going to see the voltage right at this spot here. And we do the similar thing here the negative side of our meter is connected again to the outside away from where we're connecting up for our current. Now we're ready to measure and calculate the value of this resistor. So we begin to increase the voltage of our power supply while watching our ammeter. We want to increase this to a level that gives us a real nice, convenient spot. Okay, 124.4. We want to write down that number, 124.4 milliamps. And then we come down here and we read 49.9 millivolts. With these two values, we now can calculate the actual value of our shunt resistor. So on the bench, we measured 124.4 milliamps flowing through our shunt resistor here. And we measured 49.9 millivolts across the shunt resistor. So calculating the shunt resistance value we just take this value here, the 49.9 millivolts, we divide it by the current through it, 124.4 milliamps, and we get 0 0.40113 ohms. Now our goal was 0 0.40008, but that looks pretty doggone close, and we already determined that 0.4 ohms was going to be sufficient. So, you know, I could put another resistor in parallel with this one, maybe a little trimmer or a 
potentiometer so I could calibrate my meter movement. But before I go through all that mess, I think I'm going to see how this performs. So let's set this up. Don't forget to properly zero your meter before you begin your testing. Now, if you followed my instructions on characterizing your meter, you probably already have it perfectly zeroed. Now, I carefully connect my shunt to the meter. Now, I'm going to put my shunt on the back of the meter for the sake of convenience. Because the meter itself only draws 50 microamps, I could locate the shunt at a convenient location near the point where I need to actually measure the current some distance away and then run a couple of wires over to the meter itself. The shunt does not have to be on the back of the meter. For testing this meter, I'm going to use the same basic setup as I did for measuring the resistance of my shunt. Now, here's a note for analog meter accuracy specifications. Their accuracy is specified at a full-scale reading, not necessarily at points below that. For this reason, our accuracy check will be at full-scale reading of the meter with its shunt in place, which is 250 milliamps. We're going to pass a current through a known-to-be-accurate ammeter, such as our DVM, and then through our new analog ammeter. The object is to see how closely our analog ammeter agrees with our known-to-be-accurate ammeter. All right, so let's get this all connected together. Let's check it out. To begin with, we want to make sure our power supply has the voltage turned all the way down. And now we're going to connect from the positive side of the power supply all the way down to the positive side of the current connection for our DVM. The negative side gets connected over here to our resistor. The other side of our resistor comes around to the positive side of the meter and then the negative side of the meter comes all the way back to the power supply. And now that we're all connected, we're ready to begin the test. Which means that we're going to start increasing the voltage on our power supply while watching the meter and our DVM ammeter reading. The object is to get a full-scale reading on our meter. Now, as you approach the full scale, remember that you need to tap on the meter to get a good meter position. That looks pretty good. Let me tap on the meter. That looks like a real solid 250 milliamps as, as indicated on our ammeter. And what does our DVM tell us? 250.8 milliamps. So when I got my meter all the way up to full scale, 250 milliamps according to it, my DVM read 250.8 milliamps. So that means that my analog meter, which I just set up with this uh, shunt and everything, differs from my DVM by 0.32%. That's pretty doggone good. Now I'm using my Fluke 175 to measure the current. And according to the manufacturer's specifications, it is to be accurate within 1%. So everything considered, the accuracy, the analog meter movement, our ability to read it. This looks like a go without having to add any additional parallel resistors or anything to tweak it. I'm happy with the results. So now you know how to use that low current ammeter to measure much higher currents. The process is quite straightforward. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.